are the Army Hearties and welcome to a Space Engineers automation video. So today I have for you the automatic elevator, which will, when you enter the elevator shaft from, uh, from the top and want to go down, uh, you will not have to leave the cop cockpit. All you have to do is fly in, wait for the red lights to turn off, which will be very quick. Uh, land on the platform and the elevator should go down so there is not no inputs that you will have to do yourselves so it's a pretty cool system and if you want to download it on the steam workshop you will find the link in the description when you do you will find that there is a beacon that is being very annoying in your face it is called remove me first so there you can see it remove me first so we will do that we will remove the beacon first and then we will remove the reactor and that is uh, important for stuff to work uh, it's actually important for when you load the world uh, but the order you remove them is also important so the lag has uh, let us play again and we can uh, test out the system so first of all i will demonstrate the system to you and then i will explain how it works so let's take the ship and fly off let's see we should turn on our reactors we will fly into the entrance and we will wait for the uh, lights to turn off and there they turned off so we can fly in we can park the ship so there we park it uh, so we have not left our cockpits and there is no need for it uh, if you want to be kind to the system you can turn off your generators or just inertial dampeners but you don't need to uh, with a small ship like this if you have a big ship I would recommend it uh, and if or if you've positioned yourself on one of the sides uh, which I have obviously not uh, so let's see on our gravity here uh, seems like we are experiencing a bug in the game there we go need to update the structure so that is a bug that uh, mass blocks do not update uh, when you're dealing with lower uh, gravity fields so point one gravity fields changes that happens there doesn't always affect the mass blocks unless the structure they are connected to is updated so very odd bug which is annoying sometimes in automation only in automation pretty much uh, but anyway you can see the elevator is going down and except for the bug i have had to do nothing but fly into uh, and uh, into the elevator so we will land at the bottom here and uh, that is pretty much all there is to it but if we want to go up you can see a lever on the right hand side uh, so this is the only time that there is a manual input and that is to go up and uh, that is just to give you time uh, to uh, park your ship if you're coming from down below you shouldn't need to rush or anything you just need to uh, park your ship Take your time, do that. You flick the lever, you can go up, you can place yourself in the si ship. Now, of course, it would be much faster to just um, fly up. But this is just for the uh, wow factor, because it is pretty cool. It is pretty slow, but it's very cool. Especially when you will see the, uh, the stuff that goes on to actually make this work. It is fairly complicated. It seems like we are experiencing our... Uh, bug again so let's do that nope the gravity field has not turned yet no they have not <laughs> uh, so as I said it is it is a little bit slow but now the gravity field has turned and we are on our way up uh, so we'll fly up and it will stop at the top here like nothing ever happened or uh, just as we went up and down or down and up anyway <laughs> so well, it will go up and it will do that. It will park nicely. It's uh, made to be uh, a snug fit up here. Uh, you can see that there are some <laughs> aesthetics that has been sacrificed. Uh, but that could be fixed by moving this back one block. Uh, so it is a proof of concept more than anything. It is fairly useless in survival or in any way, uh, actually. It Elevators in Space Engineers are pretty useless. Uh, so we'll see it slows down as it reaches the top. And it stays very nicely, not damaging anything. 
And just before we go into the explanation, let me show you what goes on the outside. And you can see that there is quite a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we have five main systems and what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six subsystems. So it is, it's fairly complicated, but uh, if you don't want to bother with the technical aspect and you just want to go in and see for yourself, uh, workshop uh, link down below, you can go check that out. But for the rest of you guys that want to know how this works, uh, just stay tuned and it will come right up. You are now going to get the explanation has arrived right here, right now. I'll try to keep this short because last time I did it, it took 12 minutes. So let's try to keep this one a bit shorter. Uh, so first of all, we need to explain the elevator itself. It is basically a ship that has uh, mass blocks and thrusters in all direction. It does not have a cockpit because we will not be flying this ourselves because that would be less cool. It has a gyro and stuff as well. So this is what I'd like to call a gravity guided piston. So we have gravity on all sides pushing against or almost pushing against these mass blocks. So it is trying to keep these four uh, mass blocks that you can see, the, the four ones, it's trying to keep those in the same position. So it's it's hard to show you because my uh, my gravity field camera doesn't work properly. So I can't really show you exactly how the gravity fields are, but hopefully you will understand uh, that there are gravity fields going in all directions. So there's the gravity field here here and here and here, but there is none in the middle. Uh, but anyway, what happens when we go up uh, is that the gravity field in the middle here is going to go upwards. And when we go down, the gravity field in the middle is going to turn and go downwards. And that is going to make the elevator go up and down, of course. Of course. So now we get to this very clumsy wiring that I have on the back. And I think, first of all, I should explain what the colors are. So we have a bunch of systems here and there is a bunch of them. There's kind of a lot going on. So I'll give you a quick overview. So you can see three white systems, which are resets and they are constantly powered by generators. And all of them are trying to turn clockwise. So they're trying to push them into the position that the red, green and black levers are currently in. And uh, they do work differently otherwise, but uh, let's keep that for a later part of the video. Uh, but we have the red and green activation systems and we have the yellow and blue uh, activated system. There is probably a better word. So I'm going to say the passive systems because you don't affect them. They are passive. They do what they are told to do. Uh, so the red activation system uh, uh, turns on the... Uh, the yellow passive system and the green activation system turns on the blue passive system. Both the blue and yellow activate activate the black uh, system. And they do so in different manners. The yellow turns off the black uh, activation system and the blue turns. No, that's the opposite. The yellow turns on the black activation system, which might have been what I said. And the uh, blue turns it off. Uh, so what happens here is that the red system will start with that. That is going down. And the way that we toggle the gravity fields, by the way, is by covering either of the solar panels that go to either this separate station. That is the downwards uh, gravity fields and this separate orange 
uh, station, which is the upwards uh, gravity field. So the red system, it goes to the solar panel, which is the activation for the red system. It also goes back to the red lights on the back here. So this rotor is constantly powered. It is stronger than the reset, so it will not move when it is powered. As soon as it is, as it is unpowered by us stepping in the way or something getting in the way of the solar panel, a astronaut should be enough. Uh, it will turn the rotor off and the reset will force the lever down. This will power the yellow system, which will turn the uh, yellow lever uh, counterclockwise. The blue system is turned off. That is why it doesn't resist. And then once the solar panel gets its power back, it's going to uh, return the, the red system to its original state. Now that this solar panel has been activated or uncovered, this rotor turns on. This rotor is trying to turn counterclockwise and it succeeds because it is stronger than the reset. And it will cover the orange system and uncover the purple system, meaning that the gravity is now downwards. The green system works in a very similar manner, but instead of being unpowered when activated, we uh, turn it on when we activate it. So we have currently no power and the uh, white uh, reset is able to push this back into position, which is why it's called a reset. In this case, reset is not the, per, uh, the correct name. Uh, but when we flip the lever down here, it's going to do two things. First of all, it's going to power this rotor to turn it back to its original position. So let's try to do that with our spacesuits. It's not... We usually don't have enough power to do that, but that should be enough. When that turns on, the lever should receive enough power, so it should return to its original state. And there it does. You can also see that the green guy here flights up and then is pushed back down. And it seems like I didn't pull the lever far enough. Uh, that is actually a problem. If you don't pull the lever all the way, it might not have enough time to actually turn on the blue solar panel. So we will simulate a flick of the lever, a complete flick of the lever, which you can't be in uh, the jetpack to be. But we will simulate that. So we have power right here. We have some power. We can turn that off. That should have been enough time. And it is. The blue system turns on. It turns clockwise. Uh, it forces the yellow lever to cover the black activation system. The black activation system will turn off. And the white reset down here will force the black lever into its original state, uh, which is the upwards position. So we'll see these two gravity fields now turning both off and then uh, the other one turns on. And we can actually see that this guy now starts moving and this is of course the elevator itself. So hopefully that was a good enough explanation and you have some understanding of how it works. If you want to know more, uh, go in, check it out for yourself. Uh, you can probably activate it while still being able to see. Uh, maybe you can. Yep. <laughs> you don't see too good, but you can see. Uh, <laughs> but hopefully you uh, enjoyed this video and the concept, which I think is pretty cool. And I will see you next time.